everybody. Welcome to Wilton Mill, where it is, crucially, fucking boiling. This is ridiculous weather to go go karting. Um, and that's what we're doing here today. We're here with Attack Motorsport, who are very kindly uh, letting me go out in one of their machines. I can't even remember what it's called. It's a senior Rotan. Senior Rotan, that's it. Brilliant. Obviously, I do a bit of rally cross. And before that, when I was about 11 years old, my dad bought me an old go-kart. It's a TKM engine right chassis machine. But we can never afford to go racing. And I've always sort of harboured a desire to go and have a bit of fun back in the go-kart. Apparently, Wilton Mill is ridiculously bumpy as well. I'm not really sure what to expect. I just know that it's going to be particularly punishing on my body. And I don't know if you know, but I'm not exactly a fine specimen of a human being in terms of fitness. So I think after maybe three or four sessions, I'll be absolutely ruined. So it changed here or it changed in the van? Neither are particularly dignified. No, okay. no, that much is true. Here it is then. I bet this light makes me look particularly flattering. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Did you hear that on Sky at the weekend? Yeah, Crofty said it. Yeah. I thought Tom, I like that. And Tom did like it. You were right. I don't quite know why I decided that black underwear was a good idea. I am regretting that choice somewhat now because I am about to become the equivalent of a human baked potato. Ah. Uh, oh. What? You know how it all looks like really glamorous in the world of Formula One? Yes. I don't think Daniel Ricciardo gets into his race suit sitting on the back of an Audi <laughs> trying not to get dust in his socks. Too hot. Might be too hot. Stop it. Are you going to be adopting this look all day or are you going to pull the suit up so that it's... I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking that. I don't really want to walk around with tits out. Oh, that God. finishes the look off nicely. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I haven't even gotten in it yet. So what we've got here is Senior Rotax cart, about 30 horsepower, and the power to weight ratio is pretty long. Okay. So you need to keep an eye on your temperatures. Okay. Um, we've How got, do you do that? Do you, we've got <laughs> Alright, okay, so <laughs> we've, we've got this flap here, you right. want it you want it basically open. Okay. Is this, this is your oh, form, I see that's this, it. this is your form of cooling. Oh, okay, right. This is this is your rad fan, yeah. is your oh, hand. Right. It's a perfect race car. Right. I mean this this will go out this weekend and I need to do a race. So if I look at somebody like Jimmy Broadbent, Steve Brown, etc., people yes. who are like seasoned carters, if you like, they've all had experience in Club One Hundred before yes. they came to yes. drive something like this. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> what should I expect? Uh, should expect a lot of speed. Right. Um, yeah, it'll be very heavy on the steering. Oh, these pipe cleaners will be brilliant for that. Then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What yeah. should I be aiming for in terms of the lap time? Sort of first session um, and then towards the end of the day. Yeah. So I'd like sort of by the end of the day to see you under the 50 seconds mark. Um, often where we aim for with all of our newer drivers. I genuinely am quite nervous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, because. Sorry. Just because like, I don't really know what to expect, I don't want to go and make a clown of myself. No, you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Dude. Right. Honestly, just, yeah. Might be the slowest. Yeah, it's, honestly, it's fine. It's apparently got, well, it's supposed to be me, but it does look a bit more like Jimmy. <laughs> it is Jimmy, isn't it? it? Yeah, somebody said, why have you got Jimmy on the back of the helmet? And it's like, it's not Jimmy, it's me. But apparently it looks like JV. All the gear, I hope you got the idea. I really fucking don't, mate. <laughs> Can I just say, on a small point by the way, this is the first time I've actually had number three, like, like race car, anything racing. Why is that important to you? Oh, it's the number my dad used to race with. So, yeah, he used to race with number three, and I've always wanted to race with number three, and I quite like Daniel Ricciardo as well, so, yeah. You ready? No. <laughs> don't, you know, don't yank, yank the wheel about, yeah. just, just get a feel for it, and then after that, then we can work on. What you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. If you aren't on the racing line, if all of a sudden you pull over in front of them, that causes more of a problem yeah. than if you actually go slower but stay into the racing line, they find a way around you. Does that but mean you're shouting? Somebody will. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Tom here. So you join me out on track then for our first session in the Attack Motorsports Senior Rotex car. We're just coming down the back straight in towards turn number three. This is Christmas Corner and you go into a really, really fast complex. You flick it left, you flick it right and the fast drivers going through this sort of section until they get to this hairpin here are going flat through there. So as you can see and as you can probably hear, there's quite a fair way to go in terms of commitment before we get to that point. But as you know, the name of the game in this first session was just to get myself acquainted with this go-kart and find out what it's all about and 
the circuit as well in particular. I've never driven here around Wilton Mill. So it was all about basically getting ourselves used to the car, used to the track and used to sort of the different idiosyncrasies of it as well. You can see that final corner there. I kept clipping that kerb on my first few laps around the circuit. And they actually reprofiled that over the last couple of years. And it's a really, really big, tall kerb. And if you imagine that these go-karts now are only a few centimetres off the ground, so hitting a kerb like that is basically the equivalent to hitting a wall. Some drivers got it wrong. That wasn't me, by the way. I just want to make that plainly clear. Uh, but as the session wore on, a few drivers were getting past. Of course, they were significantly quicker than I was. I was probably one of the slowest moving things out on the track at some points. But the name of the game for this first session was never to be the fastest guy. It was basically, as we said, to get ourselves acquainted with the carts. We got used to that final corner and the sort of liberties that we could take going through there. This first corner, the left-hander, you can take that flat as it turns out. But as you can tell in that first session, we were pretty much nowhere near that. I was trying to latch on to the drivers that were in front of us as well and keep a sort of closer eye on their lines going through the corners. But to be honest, it seemed like such a different world away at the point compared to where I was at. even if we were going pretty fast down the start finish straight. Bit more commitment in the latter part of the session. And yeah, just generally a bit more comfortable, really, to be honest with you. I was pretty pleased with how things were going. I think the crucial thing, though, is what was Joe making of it trackside? All right. Well, that's promising, at least. At least he thought we were doing OK. It all went well until the final part of the session. Just a bit of oversteer going onto the brakes through the left-hander. And uh, into Ashby, we ended up going a bit of grass tracking. That was right at the very end of the session. It wasn't quite checkered flag time, but I saw that happen and I thought, oh, there might be a bit of grass in the radiator. So probably a good idea to come into the pit lane just in case we don't want to be overheating this go-kart and buggering the engine up on our first time out there, basically. So we came into the pits and uh, pulled in there and caught up with Joe to find out what he thought of the session. A bit of grass track, didn't you? And I, to, I saw grass on the radiator, so I didn't want to come in and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a snap of oversteer, just yeah. went wide. You look comfy. You look comfy. Yeah, so it's just my, my hands. That's the main thing. Oh my god, I thought I couldn't take the gloves off. No, it's pain. Unbelievable. No, we can, we can get somewhere today, though. This, this yeah. is promising. You look really comfy. Thank you very much. I slipped the curb a few times in the final corner. I heard you in my head. But you didn't after. No. So you're learning. Yeah. Which is, always, which is also good. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's... Well, we've achieved our goal. Yeah? Of what? I wanted you by the end of the day, under the 50s, and you've done a 49 and a half. Beautiful. First time. Right, 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 go home. Yeah. I've had a good day. I've really enjoyed it. And I think it's time that we leave it there. End of the high. The main thing I noticed physically was my hands. I was probably gripping the steering too tight. Um, and I was chatting to some of the lads afterwards and they were saying I was basically becoming like a torsion bar. I was too stiff. But we got down to a 49.5. Laps was pretty inconsistent. The others were in the 51s or the 50s or whatever. Um, but the goal was to get into the 49s at the end of the day. And we've done that by the first session. So I'm pretty pleased. So whilst Tom's uh, faffing on with his protein shakes, both it's a good time to ask for first impressions. Yeah, so he's genuinely done really well. Um, we, he's smashed the target we set, um, albeit just the one lap. Oh so, my god, don't bring it down with that tone there, <laughs> Joe. Come on, son. So what, what we're going to look for in this session is more consistent 49 second lap times. Um, if we can get faster than that, then fantastic. But yeah, if we, if we can just keep keep getting faster, keep getting smoother especially, then yeah, we'll be right on the money and then we can start pushing even further. So I'd like to see low 48s. Yeah. What do you make of that, Tom? That's undoable? I don't know, mate. I'm going to be knackered by the end of the session. I was knackered by the end of the first session. Yeah, I mean, anyway, excuses notwithstanding. Then Max, the team owner, decided to take myself and one of the other drivers who was there also on a step-up day trackside. And basically he was sort of guiding us through the circuit as we watched sort of the cadet drivers out there to tell us the different lines through the corners and where we should be applying the throttle, where we should be turning in, what sort of speed we should be carrying. And to be honest, it was a really, really useful exercise as we got ready to go out for the uh, second session at Wilton Mill. You can see me struggling to get into the go-karts at this point. Unfortunately, those lockdown pounds have uh, had an adverse effect on my waistline. Anyway, out onto the track then for the second session at Wilton Mill. We actually ended up going out a little bit late in this session because I was busy faffing around. And as such, you can see there was quite a bit of traffic as we headed out onto the track. I was being quite slow, keeping an eye out, looking over my shoulder, and then going out on track once again as we decided to get in the way of a few drivers through the first series of corners. It's kind of the worst place you can be sat on the racing line there, but 
obviously there wasn't really any opportunity for me to sort of move out of the way. So again, out on track, you can see this is my first lap and it's amazing really to understand what it's like to not have any grip underneath you. The tyres have just got absolutely nothing. They're like driving on ice before you get a bit of heat in them and it takes about a lap or so to get some decent temperature in them and also the brakes as well. You can hit the brakes and of course being a car it only has brakes on the rear and it's so, so easy to lock them when you just don't have that temperature there. Anyway, later on in the session we got past another driver, a nice overtake into Christmas Corner. That gave me a bit of confidence to know that the pace was there at least to try and uh, get a little bit faster in this session but to be honest the name of the game for this second session was basically all about consistency we wanted to try and get a bit more consistent in terms of the lap times it was great that we managed to break the 49 barrier in the first session but if you looked at the telemetry the times were all over the place so we weren't going as quick in this session but it was funny because sat behind the wheel of the car it actually felt a bit quicker everything felt more controlled i was going slower but being more consistent and I could feel that in terms of where I was applying the throttle, how much steering input I'd got and just how much more in control I felt of the car. So everything felt a bit crazy aside from that. Yeah, a bit of oversteering to that hairpin, not ideal. But anyway, we got to stuck behind someone here who was just dawdling on the racing line. I managed to get past them again into uh, Christmas Corner and it was interesting because I was knackered after the first session so I decided to just sort of loosen my grip on the steering wheel and take things a little bit steadier again focus on the consistency over the course of the session in terms of the lap times but also just relax my body a bit more not become that torsion bar and just become a bit more comfortable a bit more at one with the cart if you like I know it sounds cliche but it genuinely is true and it, and it helped massively with my confidence in that session so anyway then, session over, let's come into the box and see what sort of times we've done and where we've made progress. We were slower in that session but we were consistently in the 51s, which obviously is a second and a half slower than we went this morning. You know, it, takes, it takes time to build up this confidence. Yeah. So you can actually take that first bit flat, yeah. believe it or not. So I would, I would like some more commitment through the, first, through the very first corner. Yeah. Dab with the brakes before dipping it into the right hander yeah. up the hill. You can brake a lot later for Christmas. Right. What it looks like you're doing is you're letting off the throttle and then braking. Yeah. Okay. I want you to be. If you're off the throttle, be on the brake. Yeah. If you're off, if you if you're off the brake, you're on the throttle. I don't want any coasting in between. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any desire to maybe try again in a, in a race meeting? And Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, let's see how I feel at the end of today first. Yeah, well, I'd like, again, yeah. yeah, I'd like to do something like Club 100. To be fair, I've been wanting to do that for a little while. The thing is, it's so different from doing rallycross. You know, I'm used to doing three or four lap sprints where you you know you go out you do three or four laps and to be fair physical condition doesn't really come into it too much you know the, to give you an example there's a guy in British rally car he's 71 and he races a supercar which is a 600 horsepower machine but because it's such a fast paced thing it doesn't really matter about your physical condition I think I need to work on my fitness a bit before I think about getting out in a race meeting oh that'll do Whoa. Good, God, this is going to need about five washes, I think. Good to see. Um, oh, yes, by the way, thank you to Sparko and Hypex for the new race suit. You guys haven't seen this yet, so um, huge thank you to them. It's been brilliant. Um, yeah, gloves, boots, suit, everything's been wonderful. So, yeah, can't thank those guys enough for helping sort uh, myself and Big Neil out for one of those. Jeff Bezos has gone onto space and a giant penis, as it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so then session three out on track. Now the name of the game for this session, of course, was not only to be consistent, but also to team it with the speed and the potential that we knew was there. Unfortunately, this session was really busy out on track and I'm not trying to make any racing drivers excuses here, genuinely. It got busier and of course I was getting quicker. So the problem with that is that you're starting to pick up your pace and then you're not either, I was kind of in the middle in terms of my pace. I was not too slow to be dropping back from the guys who'd been out there on track, but I wasn't quick enough to overtake them. So this guy in front, the number 12, he was actually driving for the Attack Motorsports uh, team as well. And you can see I was quicker than him on the exit of this hairpin, but he was faster than me in the first sector and on other corner exits. So it was a bit of a stalemate really. There were points when I really wanted to get past him, but I was just stuck in traffic throughout the entirety of the latter half of the session. And I mean, to be honest, it was a bit of a blessing in disguise in another sense, because 
I was getting knackered behind the wheel of that cart as well. Like, I was really beginning to struggle with my physical condition, especially given the temperature and also the fact that I just haven't driven one of these things before as well. My shoulders in particular were what were starting to hurt. However, that notwithstanding, it was quite useful to follow the driver in front. I think his name was Brad. Sorry if I've got that wrong, by the way. Um, just because his lines were relatively good in some corners, so I was just able to keep an eye out and see where he was turning, where he was braking. I mean, there were parts where his driving was perhaps not so good but it was quite useful as well to just keep in close combat and also you know just get myself used to it but we did manage to pick up the pace in this session a little bit more when we had some clean runs but you can see they were pretty far and few in between however i did leave the session actually feeling pretty confident i was really happy with how the session had gone despite the traffic because I knew that we'd gone quicker in the early parts of the session, we didn't have so much traffic, so we were able to be just that little bit more consistent, that a little bit faster. Looked like we might have a little bit of a look here on the number 12 going into the boot, but the session was over and we once again came back into the pit lane for another debrief with uh, the British Fernando Alonso. Basically, which is what we wanted. Yeah. Like I said, I was firing at the end of it. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, well done. Look at that. And look at that. Come with me, come with me. <laughs> it's true. Do you know what? I can see that. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Actually. Uh, last session went really well, we were at 49.3, so that was good, good start, um, good to build on it. I think we could have definitely gotten to the 48s, but we hit traffic and just couldn't get past them. We need to hit a 48 in this session. I'm hoping it's going to be a bit quieter because it's the last session of the day. If it's a bit quieter and we can hit a 48, I think he will actually have a baby. I'll be really happy. Jesus. Yes, my child. You do look a bit like Jesus with that haircut going on. Can I take that and show everybody what your hair looks like? Look at that. Oh, it's quite impressive, isn't it? Turn around. Look at that ponytail. <laughs> so this was it then. The last chance to get ourselves into the 48s. No cocking about in this one. Straight out when the green flag was thrown. Let's get as much track time as we can. Get ourselves into the 48s in the early part of the session. That was my mindset going into this one. We needed to do it in the early part of the session because I knew that coming to the end of the day I was getting even more fatigued and I knew that towards the end of the session I just probably wouldn't have the physical capabilities to be able to be that quick so out on track a few drivers got past we got some heat into our tyres and had a bit of oversteer but decided to just find ourselves a bit of clear air and let's set about getting ourselves into those 48 second lap times so through into the left hander here you can see we're just much more even committed on the outlap and I just thought Do you know what it's the last session of the day let's go out there let's have some fun let's enjoy it and hopefully everything we've teamed together with the track tuition with going smoother with getting more consistent will all come together and I knew that that potential was there to get into the 48 so here we go then round the final corner and let's set ourselves a good lap time then in this session to get ourselves underway so this is sort of midway through the first lap into the left hander you can see smoother on the steering smoother on the commitment using all of the track available to us there as well another driver just slipping up the inside through the left-handed hairpin down the back straight into the boots using all of the curb on the left hand side using the first apex they're missing the second one using all of the track available through the final corner listen to the throttle pick up there before we've even gotten the apex there was just so much more commitment from myself and so much more confidence and even into the first corner there the, at the start of the day we were braking going into that first turn and there was just such a slight hesitation on the throttle just a little lift going into there and I knew that the time was available I actually picked up a bit of a tip for myself in this last session as well going through Christmas corner just using the vision a bit more correctly as well just using my eye line to open up the corner a bit more Again, through the first corner here, through the second, on the power nice and early, using the curb on the outside, down the back straight, and then into Christmas corner. I knew if I got this apex here hooked up on the right, it would all come naturally together. So hook the apex up on the right, then the left, then into the right, dab of oversteer through there, lace on the brakes, not chopping away at the wheel, nice and smooth into there. Just really, really happy with my pace and my performance in this session. I just felt so much more confident, and I knew you just get that feeling when you're arse is parked in a cart like this that you're able to set those lap times and I knew that this was going to be a good lap if I could just string it all together in the final sector and through into that final sector we go now through the boots through the final series of corners nice early pickup through the final corner as well lovely bit of curb there 
but not too much of a problem. And I knew that we'd gotten ourselves into the 48s in that session. I looked down at the dash at the end of that lap and thought, right, we've done a 48, that's that. But I also knew that we'd managed to do it at least once more in that session. So I was over the moon as we came into the pit lane to know that we'd been able to beat the target that was set right at the very end of the day. <laughs> Twice. Twice in the 48s, from what I saw on the dash anyway. Oh my gosh. That was brilliant. I'm destroyed now. Oh, that's a little room. That was fun. Just, I, th I saw myself do a 48A and I was like, right, that's it. And I was like, no, I can go quicker than that. You've gained two mile an hour, right? Gained two mile an hour, and you've done a 48 four times. Brilliant. So yeah, over the moon, mate. Over the moon. Well done. I'm this close to going flat for the first time. That close. Yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon. I know he is as well. So yeah, no, very good day. Very good time for a beginner as well. First time out on one of these. Rally cross and karting usually don't mix. So it's it's yeah, really really impressed. Is he ready for a race? I think so. Yeah, hoping to get him out in a race soon, maybe an IKR. Yeah, very good. I don't think it gets much better than that, does it? Just that, that feeling of elation when you've just like set yourself a target and smashed it. I mean, that was just fantastic. I can't thank the Attack Motorsport boys enough. They've been genuinely brilliant. I can't believe it. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, I mean, this is my first time in a go-kart in, what, 10 years? So I think it's not going to be my last in the near future. Let's put it that way. I've got to go out and go racing. Yeah, I know. Maybe, what do you think? Do you think you'd like to see me go go-karting a bit more? Maybe do a bit of racing? And who knows, maybe we'll end up on the same track as Super GT or something like that. But yeah, um, anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Again, once again, a huge thank you to the Attack Motorsport guys and girls. They've been uh, brilliant. Thanks to Wilson Mill for having us on here today as well. Thank you to you at home for watching. Um, and we'll see you next time, whenever that may be. Take care. See you soon.